Hi, everybody, and welcome to the very first in our series of Pi Data Global sponsor interviews. Thank you for joining us today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm James Powell. I serve as the co-chair of the NumFocus Board of Directors. I also serve as vice president with purview over all Pi Data activity. It's been my absolute pleasure having the opportunity to volunteer in this capacity to help NumFocus grow, to help PyData grow, and to help the open source scientific computing ecosystem grow. I think open source is fantastic. I think it's the key to innovation. And I think it's the key to producing high quality, robust, good work. It's my pleasure today to introduce to you Paolo Martinez from MetroStar. Paolo, would you like to tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure thing. Thanks, James. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Paulo Martinez. I'm a data scientist at MetroStar Systems and um, an organizer for PyData DC. Um, I'm fairly new to uh, data science. Uh, however, I think I have benefited from uh, the open source community in being able to really accelerate my learning and uh, just stay on top of the latest developments. Excited to be here. So, Paolo, can you briefly describe for us what MetroStar does? Yes, MetroStar is in uh, government consulting, which means that we we have a bunch of uh, we have a bunch of techies, and we build a lot of tech, but it's not our own. So we go onto uh, government contracts for different uh, sorts of agencies. Um, for example, currently I'm, uh, I'm working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture's National Agricultural Statistical Survey. So it's like the census for agriculture. And we figure out what they got going on, and then we make some recommendations for how to make it better. And that almost always includes uh, some Python, um, some like rapid iterations of prototypes and demos of like what's possible to help them like develop that vision. And then we help them actually like build it, ground it and make it work. Paolo, can you briefly explain the data science stack that you use at MetroStar and what open source tools or components or libraries you use and for what purpose? Sure thing, uh, I'll do my best. So I think, uh, you know, we always start with Conda uh, for our installs, for our environment management. Certainly uh, Pandas, NumPy, um, Scikit-Learn. Um, we also have been working with uh, Dask um, and JupyterHub. And uh, I do actually a fair bit of Plotly as well. We use Bokeh to uh, visualize our Dask dashboards. Um, so we've got a lot of it going on. Could you tell us a little bit more about your use of Dask? Yes, so we've got some really exciting things going on with Dask. Um, we use them not only, so I know traditionally people uh, use it to distribute data um, over clusters. Uh, we have this interesting application where we actually figured out a way to distribute services uh, across Dask workers. It's, um, it's not traditional uh, and, you know, like we're still, uh, putting final touches on it, but it's a new and exciting way that we've figured out to distribute uh, models, actually, like large models to each node. So you only have to load the model once. Fantastic. So Paolo, it sounds like MetroStar is really invested in open source technologies. Tell us what's the coolest thing you've been able to build using Python and the PyData stack? So uh, my favorite project, I'm partial to uh, NLP, Natural Language Processing. And my uh, latest and most favorite project that I built was a uh, latent Dirichlet allocation um, topic modeler. So that's unsupervised topic modeling. And I found a fantastic article uh, showing you how to do it with PyLDA Viz, uh, Jupyter Notebooks, um, Scikit-Learn, and all of those open source projects I was able to learn implement and successfully use to build the coolest model I have built to date. So MetroStar is a big believer in open source. We all love open source. But what's your biggest pain point when it comes to the use of open source tools? Yes. So our biggest pain point uh, when it comes to using open source tools is probably version management and environment management. 
Um, so it's trying to figure out like, uh, you know, like what version of something you should download, which one to use. I'm a big proponent of environment.yamls. Uh, some people on my team prefer requirements.txt. Something that we've got going on right now, which is working pretty well, is we have a hosted uh, Jupyter Hub environment. So everybody gets to spawn their own server, uh, which has like a baseline environment that we all have access to. And then if you need to, you can do a pip install on the fly. Um, and that seems to be working pretty well for us. Does MetroStar's use of open source tools help it innovate? Without question. Uh, if you're using open source tools, you're using innovative tools. Um, so it absolutely helps us innovate. We get to see uh, the innovations that our people are bringing into, I guess, like the ecosystem. And we get to implement them in innovative ways. And then we get to share it and like workshop it with uh, our community at PyData DC. How do you think MetroStar's commitment to open source technologies, and specifically those in the PyData stack, help it attract top talent? Yeah, I think it's actually crucial because among, I guess, like Python uh, developers, among you know, like people working in data, uh, I think there's a group of people who have figured out that you know, like the innovation, uh, the exciting new developments are happening in the open source community, and those. Uh, those types of developers tend to seek out uh, companies that not only allow that, but have understood uh, how to embrace it and making it uh, like a driving uh, factor in, I guess, like the value proposition. And, you know, it's not just that we're going to, you know, like build you some code that's going to run and that's going to work. It's that we're going to bring you solutions that are, uh, you know, like, have been vetted by like the entire community and are going to mash very well with a bunch of other super exciting solutions that are out there and will be highly relevant to, you know, like the next wave of innovations that are coming down through the open source community. Paulo, I'm curious, when you were first considering whether or not to join MetroStar in your current role, did the company's openness to technologies like the PyData stack and open source scientific computing in general, did that make a difference to you? It absolutely made a difference. Uh, it was really important to me to find a company that was going to let me experiment and like have an open, uh, I guess like open range to figure out like which tools and solutions were going to work best. Uh, it was important to me that they weren't going to lock me into using this or that uh, licensed product or a piece of software and uh, it served us well. It's helped us uh, stay dynamic, uh, adaptable and yeah. Paulo, do you feel like the well-supported ecosystem of open source scientific computing tools such as the ones that we use in the PyData stack, do you feel like that has accelerated your ability to deliver real results at your company? Without question. Yeah, I would absolutely say that it has. Um, the fact that I can, uh, you know, like Google around for like some solutions, I can check the forums, I can, you know, check Conda, Conda Forge, install things, find the tutorials, uh, get the documentation. Um, all of those things are incredible accelerators. Um, I don't, I think one of the most important lessons I've learned about coding in general is that it's not always about how smart you may be. Um, it's about how many smart ideas you've been exposed to. So having that exposure and that ability to see all these brilliant solutions that are in the open source community is an invaluable resource. As an organization, why is MetroStar so involved and so interested in becoming more involved in the PyData community? Uh, two reasons. One, because uh, we want to give back. You know, like we want to make the world a better place. And I remember what it's like to be an up and coming developer and not knowing exactly how to get your bearings and the meetups and the PyData community are uh, like, you know, like irreplaceable. It's just fantastic to be able to benefit from that sort of advice and expertise. And also because we know that that's where the state of the art is, you know, like that's where you go to find out about the latest and the greatest developments. And that's where people will tell you hey, I like downloaded the super popular thing or like I tried to implement the super popular package and guess what? There's this big gotcha that nobody had find, found out about until I tried this one thing. Wow, let's all learn something like really cool and new about you know this particular package that you never would have thought of without it. So 
it's uh, it's where it's happening. Uh, I guess that's where the scene's at, and we like to be there. What would you tell to a colleague to help convince them to support Pi Data or NumFocus in the way that MetroStar has? What I would tell them is you're actually going to get a lot more out of it than you put in. Now, those are rather selfish motivations. So I would also tell them, you know, make the world a better place. Uh, Pi, the Pi Data community it is an educational community. Um, you go there, people are going to teach you something. They're going to be generous with their time. Uh, at some point, you will benefit from it. Um, you will be able to give back to others. You're also going to make... Uh, you know, like incredible, like friendships and connections, and you are contributing to like a community of movement of people that are building, not just like something new, not just like better tools to do this or that discipline better. But I firmly believe that uh, the advancements in uh, I guess like data technologies may very well represent some sort of uh, paradigm shift to the world, um, you know, like comparable to perhaps what the industrial revolution did. So you are helping make that change better. You're helping it be more informed, more human, more connected. Who wouldn't want to do that? So what are you most excited about personally about the upcoming Pi Data Global event? I'm excited to learn a bunch of cool stuff that I haven't learned before. I'm excited to see, uh, new projects, new ways of thinking about data and Python. Uh, I'm excited to see what the community looks like at a global scale. And yeah, I'm just excited to participate in like such a fantastic community. Paolo, tell me a little bit about your experience and background as an organizer of PyData DC. Sure thing. So uh, I actually attended uh, several meetups um, back in Nashville before I moved uh, to the DC area. And once I was here, my very first Pi Data DC meetup, I attended as an organizer. So Pi Data DC had actually gone dormant, uh, which happens sometimes with Pi Data chapters, uh, you know, like they'll organize a big conference, you know, like sometimes people uh, get a little bit busy. Fortunately, uh, Hussein and I uh, knew the organizers, we got in touch, uh, we were able to uh, sort of reboot it for the virtual age, uh, given that we're in a pandemic, you know, there were no in-person meetings. So we uh, were able to really take advantage of, I guess, like the quality of the community and the commitment to make this happen, even though it was all uncharted territory. We had to figure out how to make the event happen while coordinating and executing everything virtually.